Hello, geometry. Good to see you guys again here for another video. Back to learning some math. Excellent. Keep it up. Um, I want to show you guys something that's, uh, that's actually pretty neat. Um, now that you know some uh, trigonometry using Sokotoa, you're actually going to be able to do more, uh, more advanced work on problems to be able to find things that are missing, uh, as in this case right here. And uh, you'll see a shape here. This is actually a parallelogram. Um, I, that will be told to you in the directions or it needs to be stated in some way. Actually, I should, be, should have probably marked the arrows here just to prove to you that it is a parallelogram or it should have been stated, but um, you, need to, you need to know that, right? So the opposite sides are parallel. And if you remember back from uh, a while back when we talked about quadrilaterals, that implies a lot of properties, right? Opposite angles are 50. These things are both 50. This is going to be 130, 130. Because um, remember, consecutive interior angles will add to 180. And so there's a lot of properties that come up inside of a shape that you guys are now able to use and apply with trigonometry to be able to find things. I don't know if you remember this, but um, the area uh, of a parallelogram is just base times height. That's all it is, base times height. So if we're trying to find area and perimeter, then uh, area, we need to know this. Now, perimeter is pretty simple. You just have to add up the sides, right? So uh, add up uh, four sides, right? That's what we have to do. So perimeter is the distance around the thing, which we already know, actually. We could tell it's 12 plus 12, 16 plus 16. So 2 times 12 plus 2 times 16. It's going to be 24 plus 32, right? Uh, that is, what is that, 76? You guys okay with that? 76 feet, okay? That's a perimeter. So if we're going to put fence around this thing, we'd need 76 feet of fencing. That's not too bad. Uh, area a little bit more complicated, but still, you just need to know a trick. And the trick is to actually make a right triangle. You need to find the height of this thing because you need base times height. Well, we have base here, 16. And actually, if we flip this thing on its side, 12 could be the base. But the height that way is going to be a little bit more difficult to find. But let's just go with the easy height. Height is always perpendicular to your base. So imagine a perpendicular line being drawn right here. Right? There you go. Perpendicular. Uh, and you have a nice right triangle here. Now, it's going to be a little bit of a trick here to do this. But you have to recognize this 12 is also on this side. You don't see that. You're not going to have a side of your triangle. and You need a side with, a, with the angle if you're going to do this. Well, I'm going to find my height, my h. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to think, okay, so Katoa, so, uh, right, Toa. I'm going to say, all right, I have my 50 degrees. Um, this is the opposite side. I know this is my hypotenuse because it's across from the 90, right? So that 12 is my hypotenuse. So I have an opposite and I have a hypotenuse. Well, it's a sign. I'm going to say, hey, all right, sign of 50 uh, equals h over 12. I'm going to multiply both sides by 12. The 12s are going to cancel over here. I have my h, and that's going to do it. I'm going to do 12 times sine of 50, and if I punch that into my calculator, 12 sine 50, uh, I'm getting 9.19. So what happens is um, this just turns into 9.19, and that's my height. 9.19, it's approximate, actually. That's in feet. So my area is very simply 9.19 times my height. Oh, I'm sorry, I mixed it up. This is my height. I'm going to go over here. I'm just going to do, use the commutative property here. I'm going to commute them. Uh, this is going to be times uh, our base, which is 16. Sorry about that. 16 times 9.9 or 9. Point, I'm sorry, 9.19 times 16 or 16 times 9.19. It's going to give you the same answer. I'm going to times that by 16. And I'm going to get 147.08. Uh, I kept all my decimals when I did that, so maybe if your rounding is a little bit different, but um, there we go. So my area, now be careful, you have to state the correct units, right? We're not dealing in feet here, we're dealing in square feet, so you have to, you have to say feet squared there. All right, so we have our area, right? That's how many square feet would cover this thing. This is our perimeter, that is the distance around the object. Guys, there is uh, an example of how to find the area and perimeter of a parallelogram.